evening and welcome to our carol service. Not the way that we expected to have our carol service this week, but unfortunately the rain has stopped us from gathering outside. But hopefully you're nice and warm in your homes. You can sing to your heart's content at home, of course, and you haven't got to wear a mask. So there are some good things that have come out of the fact that it's pouring down with rain outside and this church car park is flooded. I'm sure you all know the words to the carol, so you can sing along to the music or whatever. But of course, Christmas is about hope and joy. The hope and joy that came in that small bundle that was born in the hay on what we call Christmas Eve. God coming to be among his people. So come to the storytelling God Listen to the tale that takes us from a rural village to bustling crowded town. That takes us from a rough hillside to the exotic reaches of distant lands. That takes us from a home in Nazareth to a rough hewn stable. Come to the storytelling God. Listen to the tale through the carols that takes us from the familiar to the surprise of a new birth. And the first carol is O Little Town of Bethlehem. days, Caesar Augustus also issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Crinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And of course we know that's the story. The baby being born in a manger. And we like to think of that as being a peaceful time, though I can't imagine that among the animals and the cows and the horses and the donkey and a few sheep as well, it was a particularly silent place. But of course, we always think of that one carol, Silent Night, Holy Night, and we're going to sing that now. been silent in that stable. After all, they'd had a long journey and they may have been getting some sleep. Up on the hillside, things were a bit different. The sheep were on the field. The shepherds were sitting round the campfire, watching their sheep and probably sharing a meal and chatting away as shepherds do. Because, you know, you know those squeaky clean shepherds that you see on your Christmas cards? Well, shepherds weren't quite like that. They were usually pretty grotty and grumpy and scruffy and probably smelt a bit like their sheep as well. But as they were minding their own business and doing what shepherds do, suddenly the sky was filled with bright light and angels praising God. And of course the shepherds, well, they weren't quite used to that, so they were all a bit scared and a bit frightened. And the angels told them not to fear because in Bethlehem, a new king had been born and he would be the saviour of the world and that they would go to go down and visit him. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth, they told the shepherds. And that must have been such a great noise and great story for them to hear because they left their sheep on the hillside and that was unheard of for shepherds to do and made their way down to Bethlehem to see Mary and Joseph and the baby. And so we're gonna sing about that now. But we're not gonna make that one schoolboy error of singing while shepherds wash their socks by night. We're gonna sing while shepherds wash their flocks by night.
sure what the shepherds expected when they got down to Bethlehem. I'm sure they didn't expect to find themselves directed to an old stable at the back of an inn or a hotel. But that's where they went. And when they got there, they didn't see a king sitting on a throne. They found a mother and father and their child. A child laying in the feeding trough, laying in the manger. And so we're going to sing about that now. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. And I'm sure if you haven't known all the words to the other ones, you know this one because this is the one we can all remember singing when we were at school in the school nativity play, standing there looking very angelic ourselves. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. the shepherds gave their gifts to the newborn baby and then they went away rejoicing at everything that the angels had told them and everything that they had seen and Mary who perhaps still was wondering what was going on well she pondered these things in her heart all the visits from the angels to her and to Joseph the journey the arriving with nowhere to stay, the birth in the manger, the visit by the scruffy shepherds, and of course, the angels. I'm going to sing now, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him were all things made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness had not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And that, of course, is what we celebrate every Christmas. The love of God coming into the world, bringing joy and hope and peace into whatever situation we find ourselves in. And we can rejoice at that. So let's do that with our next carol. Ding dong, merrily on high, in heaven the bells are ringing. to the end of our carol service there's just one more carol that we'll be singing in a moment i hope this christmas will be as good as you can make it perhaps this is the year we learn that we don't need lots of material things to have a wonderful and lovely christmas perhaps this will be the year when the true meaning of christmas comes into our hearts and we find that love joy and peace and that's my wish for you this Christmas that you will come to know the Christ child and the joy and love and peace 
that he brings. If you've been watching this and you're worried about being on your own this Christmas, do get in touch. There's always someone who can be there for you. Even if it's just five minutes on the phone or just a reassuring knock on the door. Someone is there for you. And now, may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Christmas tide and always. Amen. Now we're going to sing our final carol, O come all ye faithful. <laughs>